So we're working our way up to the catapult. We're getting heavier and heavier here. Fritz, working our way through the Battletech Game of Armored Combat set. We are looking at the mechs that are just included with this. And I'm combining also the head-to-head -head starter set on there, the, the two mech set, just so it's, it's complete. Because if you're a completionist, picking up both on there. And my goal in these videos, if you're coming to this through YouTube search or maybe off of my blog, the idea is to give you some starting thinking points, some considerations just based on the mechs that are included with this set and how to begin to approach utilizing them on the table and some of those points to keep in mind as you develop your play style and, and figure things out. So now we have with the catapult, and I've got to do a little hot water surgery on him to, to fix that, that missile pod on there. The catapult is our first dedicated um, at least the C1, the core, our first dedicated support mech. A support mech is a machine that wants to hang back and, well, support either with long-range missiles or with long-range autocannons. It wants to get into position, fire away, fire away, fire away, um, harass the opponent from long range, and if engaged, get out of there. The catapult has the speed to do it. What's interesting about the catapult is not only is it a dedicated long range unit, because it carries multiple medium lasers, it's got some bite at close range. Um, if we look at some of the mechs in Battletech outside of the core set, if we look at something like the Jaeger mech, or we look at um, mechs that just have long range assets, the challenge with it is, because no one's just going to let you shoot at them for free, if you send something like the Wolverine, we talked about uh, Wolvie being an amazing like mugger type unit. If you send this Wolverine out to engage a Jaeger mech, that Jaeger mech's got to run for it because it doesn't have the armor and it doesn't have the, the short to medium range weapons to, to repulse that attack. The catapult does. So this is a great mech because you can hang back. It, it switches roles. You can hang back and shoot at long range and then, even if you're not threatened, if necessary, after you've softened the target up, now you can run up there and switch to short and medium range with the lasers. So a, a fantastic mech. I mean, really um, a great mech that was included. Now we're getting into long range missile with some bite and with some redundancy. So in Battletech, right, it's this constant, this constant um, barrage of modifiers where... I'm trying to run like a maniac so I can stack up the modifiers for you to hit based on how many hexes I've moved. You're trying to bring the modifiers down because you're trying to get into the optimal range based on the weapon. And although you often have to run to get into position, sometimes you can walk to bring down those modifiers. So it's, it's this back and forth. And you can only control so much. One of the ways that you get around the modifiers that stack from your opponent is redundancy having multiples of the same weapon. Again, this has got the medium lasers. It has two long-range missile 15 packs. So if I need, you're at long range, I'm not moving because I've got, I've got good position. I ran up there. But you're moving and, and maybe you've got some cover on there. So I'm going to need uh, 10s, 10s or 11s to hit you. If I'm firing one weapon and I need 10s and 11s to hit, okay, I'll probably miss. If I'm firing two weapons... That increases my chance to hit. If I'm firing more than that, that increases my chance even more. So the catapult has that redundancy. Massive. I mean, some of the other machines here have redundancy. This has full redundancy at long range and at short range. The 15 missile packs have the spread, the numbers. Now, when we were looking at the Griffin, and that's up there, that video is up there in my archives. If you look under my channel for Battletech Starter, the 10 pack, or if we look at the five pack and other machines on there, yes, it has the long range, but it doesn't have the spread to, if you roll legendary on the chart, if you roll really high for the missile clusters, it doesn't have the spread. 15 does. So this has the redundancy and getting hit by a 15 pack is not fun. The only thing less fun is, is getting hit by a 20 pack on there. A crazy, crazy machine. The other advantage is now you have your first taste of indirect fire, the real possibility of indirect fire. Um, you can do that with the Griffin and other LRM equipped mechs, but having the redundancy of the two with the 
15 pack, that opens things up tremendously. Indirect fire, what is that? Really quick. What that means is for the most part, you need line of sight to be able to shoot at a target. Indirect fire means you have another unit, um, often infantry or maybe helicopter support if it's combined arms. In this case, the core set. The Locust is a perfect spotting machine because it can run up there and stay safe. Uh, so here's my target, the Battlemaster. This is behind a building or it's behind some elevation. You, you don't have line of sight to it, but I do have range if I count the hexes. This mech through Voxcast, Holocast, whatever is left of the tech, maybe it's just the squawk box, can kind of call in the position and say, hey, shoot to here. Now there's some modifiers. You've got a plus one modifier for firing indirect. You've got some modifiers on the Locust. You're gonna have terrain if there's terrain in between because it can't relay the position. Yeah, you're gonna need 10s, 11s, or 12s to hit. But if your opponent can't shoot back because you're hidden, You've got the redundancy of the two packs, and if one does hit, it's an LRM-15. That's, that's amazing. I often utilize the catapult to indirect fire. Indirect fire is often a great force your opponent to make a decision. Um, this is a decision-making mech, and what I mean by that is uh, often your opponent, based on the mission, based on the hex map, based on what you're playing, they might have a superior position in terms of cover or defending a base or some sort of fortification and you're not going to run up there and attack them but if you can get into indirect fire where you can hit them and they can't hit you even if you need 10s 11s and 12s to hit um, that's free shots every single turn your opponent is not going to let you sit there and shoot and wait till you run dry and see what happens on there so that's a great way to get into indirect. It's like, oh, you're, you're dug in and you're not moving out and you're not coming to get me? Okay, I'll get into indirect fire position and I'll just plink away. Watch really fast as an opponent, as your opponent comes under fire. Uh, they're going to send something out to engage you. They're going to send something out. And that's when you kind of release your other mechs and, see, and pushing from there. So an excellent, excellent mech. Um, we've talked about some ammo explosions, the fact that the ammo is located in the torsos, the left and the right torso. Um, that's really, really awesome. I mean, Thunderbolt's got some challenges with that ammo and spread out all throughout when you go to crits. I can't say enough about the catapult. Let's look at the variant on here. Now this, this, is, this is strange. Um, I understand what they're doing, introducing the idea of variants. You have your stock mech, which means when this mech was built and it was designed, it was designated C1. And based on the Battletech narrative and, and playing through the game and, and the history of it, sometimes mechs get upgraded, downgraded, swapped out, and, and it changes the role. Um, I'm not really sure what they're doing in the K2 on it. You've got PPCs, you've got medium lasers, and you've got machine guns. So you have, the, you have redundancy, right? Uh, the idea that one is none, two, wait, one is none, Two is some, three is one on there. And what I mean by that is having two PPCs means if I shoot them both, in theory, the chances are good that one will hit. So at long range, I've got the PPCs. Then as I close, I start with the medium lasers. Then as I close to point blank, I use the medium lasers and the machine guns. Uh, the challenge here is the heat sinks just don't support it long term on it. You've upped them to 20. So I can fire both PPCs at long range, but I can't really do anything else. And now as I close, um, I'm gonna be generating heat firing those PPCs and the medium lasers. It's got, it's got some heat management challenges on it. I mean, it's not heat management like the Thunderbolt or some of the other mechs, but previously, with the exception of the Griffin shooting the PPC and the long range missiles like a maniac every turn, you really didn't have to worry about heat. This is the first variant where we need to start thinking about heat. I mean, and, and same with the C1 on there, um, but especially with the K2. A weird variant. I'm not really that sure on there, but at least, again, it, it has that um, redundancy with the two PPCs, the two medium lasers, the two machine guns on it. That, that does make it effective at dealing at all ranges. Something to try out to see and play. Next, we're, we're incre increasing the weight tonnage. Thunderbolt, we've arrived. 
one of my favorite machines on here. And um, I mean, just sexy, sexy looking, really awesome. It's got the weight, it's got the weapons, it's got everything. It's, it's an amazing mech, but it has some serious issues on it. As in, if you're not aware of them, um, you're gonna get into trouble really, really fast. Out of all the machines in the set, this is the hardest to pilot. This is the most challenging on it. Possibly maybe a little bit too challenging for the set, but it certainly is an iconic mech on there. Um, it has tremendous history in the Battletech narrative. A lot of Thunderbolts on the table. I'll often utilize them in, in my shock lances. But um, learning the game, if you just get out there shooting like a maniac and running, this machine's going to go south really, really fast. So we definitely want to take a look at it and explore it.